Welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I have another fountain pen video for you today. Today it's an unboxing. Well, it's a, an enveloping and it is the Moon Man M8. So let's take a look at it right now. Ooh. So here we go with the unboxing or unpackaging of this Moonman M8. This is the packet that it came in. I've got to say that uh, this is not up to Moonman standards, especially for a pen valued at $38 Canadian and which I purchased on eBay on December 13th and today is January 28th. So uh, that's a bit of time uh, considering. And before I unbox this, this seller, I don't think I'll deal with them again, but I'll show the uh, eBay auction here. They, um, they told me that the shipment might be delayed slightly because of Christmas and all that. If it comes after Christmas, will you be upset? And I said, no, no, that's fine. It wasn't a Christmas gift, but this was December 13th. I figure, okay, it's going to come after Christmas but before New Year's, or maybe at just slightly after New Year's, not on January 28th. Uh, when I finally, after many weeks of waiting, asked them for an explanation, I got an email apology from them saying that they had sent a gift to me and that uh, the package should arrive uh, shortly and that the gift was to compensate for any difficulties I had. The difficulties they were having was that they had sold it to me without having stock. They were having difficulty in getting the Moonman M8. I know that they were but in short supply. Some people got them on Etsy. Uh, I got mine on eBay. But here's the little gift that they gave me. This came in the mail uh, three weeks ago. And it is a mustache comb. So, although I appreciate good grooming of my facial hair, you want this, Chief? Yes, uh, thank you, Al. There's something on the side of your mouth, Al. No, no, the other side. Uh, I'm not sure that this compensates uh, for not getting the pen in time. Uh, also, this item, because it came to my mailbox on the same tracking number as my M8, it said on eBay that my M8 had arrived. So I sent them another note saying that, uh, no, I got your, your funky little mustache comb. I did not get the pen. Uh, and they said, oh, yes, no, no, it's not a problem. It, uh, it uh, left here yesterday. And then looking at the tracking, it left China the day after I sent the email. So let's take a look here. I'm not impressed to begin with. Let's hope that I will be impressed with something that I see in this pen. I didn't ask for a box, of course. And here is the pen. In a pen sleeve. And let's take our first look at it. This is the Moon Man M8. This is an M6, as far as I can tell, with a different finish. I got the multicolored one because the one with the silver flecks on it, silver flakes, still had the gold clip. And I thought that looked odd. And you couldn't get the uh, gold one. I believe they're resupplied now with the gold one with the gold clip. And it actually looks very nice. At first glance, this does look very interesting. Those flecks are deeper and more sparkly than I expected. So let's see how many turns. There's one turn. Two turns. Two, two turns. And we see the gold moon man. And this is a, a fine nib. So I'm going to clean out this pen and we'll be back afterwards to take a closer look. So just as I was going out to the mailbox to see if my pen BBS 500 might be there, it wasn't, I got this nice little turntable in the mail, which I ordered back in December as well. 
but uh, anything Chris has, I have to have too. So I thought I'd show off a beauty shot. Okay, I've cleaned out the pan with some dish soap and water and actually made a swap before I even inked the pen. This is the fifth Moon Man I've owned with this new mountain range style nib. I have two M600S's, one C1 and one M6, and now this M8. All of the nibs wrote okay, but I replaced most of them with the Mini Fude Bobby Bent Nibs. Say that five times fast. Mini Fude Bobby Bent Mini Fude Bobby... Rubber Baby Buggy Bumpers. Rubber Baby Buggy Bumpers. Ha! You didn't know I'm gonna say that, did you? When I stopped writing with the M6 and the C1, I returned their nibs to the original Moon Man. The first M600S I received came with a two-tone nib. The rest came with either gold or chrome. I much prefer the two-tone nib, and I thought it would look very nice in this M8. I just removed the nib and feed assemblies and swapped them. It only took about five seconds. I expect the gold Moon Man nib will write just fine. It looks good, and without ink in it, it was smooth on the page. But I had tweaked this two-tone nib previously, and I know that it writes very smooth and very, very wet. As we look at the parts and features of the M8, I'm going to keep comparing it to my M6 for reasons that should be obvious. So what I'm going to do is look at the parts and features of this pen, give some measurements and size comparisons, and then do a writing sample. Let's look at this M8 now that I've swapped the nib and inked it up. This pen comes with a little bit of controversy. I'm not the only one who experienced some difficulty in obtaining this pen. I know others in the Facebook Pen BBS group, Taste the Rainbow, had issues with sellers, as did Chris Rap 52 Apparently, the pen maker had difficulty with the gold-flecked version of this pen, and they quickly became unavailable. As soon as the pen was announced and placed on Etsy and eBay, orders quickly outpaced the supply. And when that happens, two things happened as well. Uh, the prices went up, and the suppliers started making false promises. My vendor on eBay sold me the pen and then told me some story about deliveries from the supplier. It became clear that my seller was selling stock he did not have instead of just putting up sold out. I noticed that Moon Man has come out with a yet another model, the M800. It is an extremely attractive resin pen, although it was priced way above what I was comfortable with at around $46 US. I put it in my cart on Etsy anyway. During the hour or so that I deliberated on spending that kind of cash on yet another Chinese fountain pen, the price went up $10 US and decided the matter in an instant. Negatory there, Big Ben. Negatory, Big Ben, you're still too close. None of this should detract from our assessment of the actual pen, however. It is a large size, cigar-shaped pen with a black plastic cap and body infused with flecks of multicolored resin. This is a surface coating of some sort as the flecks of colored resin do not go deep into the plastic, as you can see from the bottom of the cap. The very attractive gold clip is springy and extends from the cap with a small tang that is affixed at the bottom, or I should say the top, of that cap with a Phillips head screw that's under a plastic liner. The M6 suffered from an issue where the ink bled through the cap liner and soaked into the wooden cap. It's built exactly the same way. But I didn't have that issue with my pen, but uh, others have. So I'm not sure whether that would be a problem here. Certainly it won't be a problem in soaking into that plastic. All you would do is just clean it out, I suppose. The cap comes off in one, just two and a bit turns and reveals a black plastic section and gold threads. Those threads are very, very round. There's a small step up there. And there is the two-toned Moon Man nib with that mountain range pattern on it, 
the Crescent Breather Hole Moon Man logo, and it says Moon Man and a circle F for fine. The cap tapers up to the end of the cap where it steps down very, very slightly to the body, and then it's straight to about here where it tapers down to a rounded point. It's a very attractive pen. The pen does not post, however. That does go on there, but it gets knocked off very, very easily, just like the M6. Had the same issue. With the M6, I was worried about the wood splitting. On this one, I'm worried about that plastic scratching that, that finish on the pen. The section unscrews and reveals a one of those reinforced metal nipple ink converters. That is very typically Moon Man. And a gold bottom of the section which on previous Moon Men had Moon Man or the model stamped into it, but these are just blank. In fact, the only branding on this pen is on the nib. Whereas on the M6, it is embossed or etched into the wood. That ink converter is not a international standard. This pen, however, will take a Lamy long cartridge. It's a very tight fit, but it fits in there nicely. And it will take a Parker short cartridge, but it will not take two Parker short cartridges piggybacked. And it will not take a Parker long. So let's take a look at the original nib that came with this pen, which I swapped into my Moon Man C1. As you can see, it's all gold, whereas this is the two-tone that came with my M600S teal, and my Moon Man M6 has a chrome. So from what I can see, Moon Man is shipping with either the chrome or the gold now, but I've not seen that two-tone on a pen. Whether they're selling it or not, or making it or not, I don't know. But I find that a lot more attractive in that pen. Let's spend a moment looking at this gorgeous cap and body uh, material. I hesitated to call it resin because I don't believe it is resin, I believe it's plastic. I can feel very slight bumps where those flecks of material are applied. So again, I think that's on the surface, some kind of a surface applique. Maybe they roll it in this material and then put some lacquer over top of it. I'm not sure. I know it's resin, but it uh, certainly looks like abalone shell to me. Not like mother of toilet seat at all. And I know abalone shell because I've got guitars covered in it in the real thing. When I first saw this pen, I was immediately reminded of those gorgeous Irushi lacquer uh, pens you see from Namiki. This pen isn't 2000 bucks, of course, but you know that this is plastic in your hand. You can feel it. But I was impressed by how beautiful it is, and I'm going to say that it's the poor man's Urushi. Not that poor. This pen wasn't cheap. $40 US. I want to talk briefly about packaging. I know many eBay sellers strip pens from their boxes uh, that might come in from the manufacturer, but it's also reasonable to assume that Moon Man might just bulk sell these pens to suppliers without any box. Uh, but this is the only this is only the second Moon Man that I've received in just a plastic wrapper. My M600S Star Blue also came in a plastic wrapper, but that was well after the release of the model. I've noticed that the original release of the model will come with packaging and boxing, for which Moon Man is known. Here's the box from my M600 and my M600 Teal, uh, M600S Teal came in one of these as well. And that's just a lovely, that's hard cardboard, soft, velvety, little pillow there. 
And of course, at that price point, which is not far from this one, that was a nice feature. Even my M2 came in a nice box with an eyedropper and some foam and some branding on it and so forth. And my other Moon Man, M6, came in this box. Little coffin box. The pen sits in there very nicely. It's a nice display. Has Moon Man labeling, logos, and so forth. It was very attractive. Easy Buy on Etsy has this pen for sale for $37.99 US and has an option for the box which looks similar to this one for an extra two bucks US. As of today, the day of filming this, Easy Buy has the M8 in the gold fleck and the silver fleck, but they're sold out of this uh, colorful, multicolored version. Considering I paid $23.50 US for this without a box, even given the six and a half week delivery time on this pen, I'm good with not having a box for that price. Now let's look at some measurements and size comparisons, and I'll be right back with a writing sample. M8. This is a fine nib, although, as you can probably tell from this line, it writes more like a medium. It is a steel nib, of course. And the ink today is my favorite ink of all time here. Roshizuku. On Pecky. And the paper here, by the way, is Clairefontaine 90 gram. Let's check the wetness. Now that's a very, very wet and very smooth. writing experience. As I mentioned previously, this nib wrote very well before I tuned it up. I made it a tad wetter, and it is simply amazing right now. A few minutes before filming this, I put it in my wife's hands for her to try out, and I don't own a Moon Man M8 anymore, as this one is spoken for. As to line variation, there isn't much to be had. There's a no pressure line, there's a little bit of pressure, but it is a fairly stiff steel nib, as you would expect. Let's listen to it. This is just a beautiful writer. You probably can't see this, but I'm getting a lot of sheen and a lot of shading out of this ink. It's one of the things I love about this Orochizuku Kanpeki. And some reverse writing. Actually works very nicely. It's not that scratchy at all. I'm getting a very thin line. So you're getting more line variation out of the reverse than we are out of trying to put some pressure on it and some quick writing. Very wet, 
This is still wet over here. All in all, this is a very attractive and beautiful writing pen. I love the look and feel of this gorgeous, wet and smooth number six nib. I like that they are easy to swap in and out. And that is one of the things I love about Moo Man in general. They are up there with Pen BBS and they're continuing to put out new models and new designs and provide a writing instrument that is customizable. I really like that. What I don't like so much is the fact that the model doesn't post and the current retail prices are a bit high for me. The only place I've seen them is, right now is on Etsy and they're now priced at $39.99 US. So if you liked this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when new videos arrive. And that just leaves it for me to say, Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.